Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 199A of Tales with TR. I'm your host, Terry Ryan Jr. And I will say this before anything else, I'll be in Halifax Thursday night at the annual sport charity dinner. I'm not sure exactly. I know in Halifax, this is a big day. I'm not sure if it's... Um, you know, celebrating their local athletes. We have a couple of sports dinners here. We have a a few of those like a year, like the Newfoundland Sports Annual Dinner, the Hall of Fame Dinner, the, you know, the uh, each, each community has their own version of that. The province has a version. So I believe it's honoring some athletes in Halifax and raising some money for a great cause, although I'm not really sure right now what cause that is. I just looked before and I can't find it. I do so many of these events, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be at the Sheraton. And uh, if you're from Halifax, you know exactly where that is downtown. A lot of uh, great vibe around there. Not far from the Halifax Mooseheads venue. Not far from a lot of the bars downtown. So... I'm looking forward to that and seeing some old friends. Of course, Halifax is my old stomping grounds of, of sorts. I had a lot of buddies go to St. Mary. Well, I had buddies go all over. It's Atlantic Canada, right? You hit 17, 18, graduate, 18, I guess, 19, you graduate from high school. A lot of people want to travel a little bit. What do I want to go too far away from home? Uh, but in Newfoundland, that's always means somewhat of a trek, seeing we're on an island. We have an awesome university here, Memorial University in St. John's. And we have colleges and branches of the university and other places like Grand Falls and Cornerbrook and uh, Stephenville. You specialize in certain certain uh, categories. But, um, you know, a lot of people want to get away. And, you know, a lot of people get scholarships, say, to play in the Atlantic whatever, soccer, basketball, whatever you name it, hockey. We don't, we don't have, we have pretty much all the varsity teams at Memorial, except we don't have hockey. And I believe that's a cost thing. As you see, um, I'll get into the growlers now in a minute, but well, we might be losing their team. Um, but anyway, so I, I'm, I'm very familiar with Halifax. I've been there probably the most of any city other than St. John's. Even though I've never really lived there, I spent a lot of time in the summers. I used to go there and train with St. Mary's when Trevor Steinberg Berg was the uh, coach, Bird Dog's old buddy. A lot of friends come through and play. The university, Keith Delaney, Patty O'Keefe, Colin Power come to mind. Um, it uh, That was at St. Mary's, of course. Um, but anyway, Halifax is a vibe. So I'm really looking forward to getting back. I'm going to go in tomorrow. I get in at about uh, 3 in the afternoon, I believe. And uh, go from there. So if you're in the area, honestly, drop by. I often say it on here, but I'd much rather face-to-face -face, have a beer or a coffee or whatever. I don't fucking know. Sandwich. And talk about hockey. And these events are like ground zero for that. And it's much easier than me going through my 500 messages a day. I still got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. So if you're one of those people, by the way, that's sending me messages, I'm not trying to be ignorant. It's just gotten to a point now that it's laughable and... You know, I just get back to people with like a like something or like, hey, thanks, cheers. I think people kind of get upset. But look, I, I, I've never met you guys and I'm a, a lot of you and I, I just try to manage it. And, you know, I'm traveling a lot. So most people that I'm talking to here have an opportunity to come out and have a chat. Um, this year, if nothing, I mean, I've been all over, right? So rather than send me a message on Instagram, asking me what I think of the Canadians breakout, like, or their power play. Like, I just don't have time. Like, just imagine how many people send me messages. I don't have time to break down. Like I'm on fucking TSN with Bob McKenzie. What I think of a certain team or situation, do this, send me a message on Twitter. Like I'm answering these questions or come out live to an event and we'll have a real conversation and a beer and, you know, um, or like I said, coffee, whatever the fuck you're into, but you'll have a hockey conversation and you'll get a much more genuine uh, communication out of me if you see me in person. 
Anyway, so after that, then I'm going to Binghamton. So I'm going to fly to Toronto, I believe, on uh, Friday morning. I'm going to, they got a car rented for me, Brian Lang in, in, uh, in Binghamton. And I'm going to drive down. It's not really that far over the border. And then we're going to have uh, Hockey for Hope. So we're do, I'm doing an autograph signing on Friday, and then on Saturday is the game. Looking forward to that. Charity game, a lot of locals in the area, a lot of uh, people like myself that are from outside that want to come in and help the cause, maybe raise awareness, maybe bring some bodies in, bums in seats, as they say in Shorzy. So um, that's what I'll be doing. I'm really looking forward to it and hope to see you guys. Now, a lot of you asked um, about the Newfoundland Growlers losing their team. And uh, the announcement came on the heels of a weekend that Boise were here. So I had friends. Chris Bestell used to be my trainer in Boise. He's still there, or equipment manager. Still still there doing it. And I spoke to him. He said, wow, we had no fans in Newfoundland. But the thing is, it was a snowstorm that weekend. One, one game got postponed. Like There was like 80 centimeters. Record, and, and so people aren't going to go, obviously, right? So those nights, I remember they used it as an example. So just to put it in perspective, about a week a little over a week ago, it was announced that the Growlers, Newfoundland Growlers, the team I played for in January, might lose their team. And then with the recent attendance on that particular weekend being like 800, it was like horrible. But again, it was like no one could move. Like I would never have gone to a game. And I go to most. It was fucking snow up over the door. Like it was crazy. Now it's all gone. Right? Like that's what happens here. Fucking crazy. Right? But after that, it went up to like 8 degrees. It was 12 yesterday. Snow's melting. It caused a lot of floods and stuff, but we're used to that. But, you know, you might get a huge amount of snow and then it'd be warm the next day. You might have five days of rain after that. So anyway, it causes for some crazy weather and people just don't want to deal with it when it's like that, especially when you get so much snow shoveling out and all that. And it's parking sucks around. We had a great fucking rink in the heart of downtown, but parking sucks. Parking sucks anyway downtown. And Mile One Stadium got put there, but no extra parking got put there. Right? It was a battle anyway, finding a spot. And you know, you can imagine on the weekend, even me, it's a perfect example. A lot of me a lot of my buddies will uh start in Mount Pearl. Um, I don't know, maybe have a barbecue, maybe a beer, maybe no beer, whatever. But we drive downtown because it's a little ways. I don't know, cab's probably 30, 40, 50 bucks. I don't know, 15 minutes. Um, should be 30, but recent prices, I guess. I get it. Cab's got to live. And gas went up. And it's probably closer to 40, between 40 and 50. But uh, so we often just drive down and leave the car, pick it up the next day. But being that we don't want to drink and drive later, obviously. But so it was a battle anyway on any real nice day, night, but especially on, it, it could be the worst time of year, but on a Friday and Saturday, it's still going to be a battle. Um, being how popular George Street is in downtown St. John's. So mile, or I guess it's called Mary Brown Center now where they play is really accessible. It's just hard to park. But anyway, that those aren't reasons to lose your team. People ask me, and it was that one weekend, yes, there was shit attendance, but normally it's great. And I've played in the coast. I know there's some rinks you go to and they average like fucking 1,200. And the, 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 the parent team, the NHL team that's affiliated doesn't really care because they're paying the bills and it doesn't really matter. Um, well, to some it does. To some it doesn't, right? They just want to watch their prospects. And like, I don't know the deal Toronto Maple Leafs have with the Marlies there. Um, but the Marlies in the American Hockey League, first of all, which is a rung ahead of the East Coast League. And, uh, you know, Toronto gets to watch their prospects across the street from the Maple Leafs. Now, what value is that? I would think it's a lot of value. And I probably would prefer that if I was a GM or, or any part of the brass or even a player, minor league guys. It's much easier if they're across the street. The attendance sucks, so be it. But now that being said, the Marley's attendance doesn't suck. I'm just giving you an example. It happens in a lot of cities. How are the Calgary Wranglers doing? I don't know. Attendance. That's Calgary's firm team, and they're across the street as well. I mean, it's really convenient. But anyway, here in Newfoundland, it's not so much actually how far we are away from everything. We've had teams 
and no, people love coming here, right? And it's it's always a blast. As a visitor, I played on many teams that came in and played in St. John's. Back when I played, it was against the St. John's Maple Leafs, so I ended up playing four, but it was all American League stuff. I came in with Fredericton, and I came in with Hershey. But um, what happens is the bill, because in order to get in the league, usually, I know in the AHL, I know we had a Q team for a while, St. John's Pog Devils. I'm not sure how it worked there, but I know with this team, the Growlers, they have to take care of the other team's transportation. I know at least the majority of it, the vast majority. So that's an extra expense, right? To put it in perspective, every game I've gone to this year and last, there's at least 4,000. I mean, what do you want in the East Coast League? A few sellouts, right? A few sellouts with, uh, of course, there's like a bad night here is half full, which is 3,000. Which again, for the coast, is not bad. A bad night's 3,000 people. So if you were just to look at the crowds, that wouldn't give you an indication of a, a true indication of why we're losing our team or, or, or we're on the border of losing it. It's because I, I believe all those costs. And look, I don't know. Dean McDonald is the owner, right? I don't know how, how many other people, but I know he's one of the owners, and he owns Trois Rivières too, and they're folding. Now, you got to wonder. He seems great. I mean, they won it in their first year of existence, and the place was on fucking wheels. That was only about five years ago. And we've had a competitive team ever since, and some real good players, league awards. I mean, it's a great product that people get to see here, and a lot of, a lot of players like Todd Skirving from away, like loves playing here, kind of gave a local discount to play because he loves it, I, I believe. I mean... You, there's also a lot more opportunity here off the ice, which I'm not sure exists in other places like it does here. So you can make a bit of pocket coin on the side doing local promotions and stuff. We get guys like Zach O'Brien, which could be playing in a lot of higher leagues, quote unquote, throughout the world. But he's from Newfoundland. He's got a Calder Cup in the AHL. He probably doesn't feel he's getting up to the NHL. But AHL games every year gets called up and real good player. James Melindy. We had Adam Party come back here and play local discount fucking 10-year NHLer that came back and just played in the coast for Newfoundland. Um, Marcus Power, I can go down the list. Lots of local guys and mainlanders that love playing here. So there's a reason for that. You're treated really well. In relative terms, if you're a Newfoundland growler in St. John's, it's not a whole lot different than being a Toronto Maple Leaf in Toronto. Um Again, on a relative level, I mean. Like locally, the Growlers are where it's at. And they really have a great reputation. So from Glenn Stanford to Dean to whoever else is involved in player personnel and all those things, I think Trevor Murphy has something to do with it. In any case, they surround themselves with great people. And there hasn't been a lot of off-ice problems here in St. John's for that reason. Because we have great people that love, they want to come here, they want to represent the community. They're immersed in the community. And the community accepts them. It's so it's it's sad if we end up losing the growlers. It means a whole lot to us. I know it means I've been all over again, dropping pucks, playing games. I've played in all kinds of minor leagues. I've seen most of the United States through my journey. That that is hockey, and I've been very fortunate. But I'm telling you right now, there's not a lot of places in any rung of pro hockey. The NHL kind of. Not included, right? You do to me any fucking AHL team, East Coast League team, Sunshine League, fuck whatever it's called, Central League, United League, Federal League, overseas. Um, I've seen games in all those leagues, and I mean it. The community here will be devastated if the Newfoundland Growlers have to go. But the why you'd have to ask the owners. Um, and what is, you know, maybe they're just not making enough money. I don't know, right? Every team that every time every time a, a team folds, I, I don't know if it necessarily means they're bankrupt. It could mean that the owner expected by this point he'd make more money, he or she, and um, they're not, so they pull the plug. That that could be it. I, I really don't know, but I definitely know that our costs here in Newfoundland to run the East Coast League team are way more than every single other team in the league. Being in that, we're furthest away. And we're an island. you got to fly in. It's not like you're in Adirondack or something and can fucking land a plane, get on a uh, plane, 
get off and then play Philadelphia and Hartford and or whoever. I know they're not in the league now, but you know what I mean? Like my AH, AHL experience was like Lowell, Albany, Springfield, Syracuse, Philadelphia, right? It was all right there. So we it was just an easy layup. You, you were from Fredericton, close to the border, drive over. We play these teams. It's a joke, right? For And the Montreal Canadiens were funding us. Not like they're fucking short on money, right? And so it was really convenient playing in, in Fredericton. And not only for me, because I'm from Atlantic Canada and I enjoyed playing there, but, you know, for any team that's running any budget or whatever, it was a lot more cost efficient to play where you could bust to games quite easily and and land in one spot and, and, and play everybody in the area for a couple of two or three weeks twice, whatever it is, a couple of those road trips, right? And that's half a season of, of road trips, right? And then usually go on one Western or whatever, like, you know, but it's, it's just in Newfoundland, everybody that comes in is on a long road trip and they got to play at least, well, they always play three games, right? So you come in here, you play three games in a row against the same team. It happens every time. Leads to some rivalries, some bullshit here and there, like bullshit. I mean, like, um, stirring up shit, not bullshit. I like watching it, but you know, it adds to the flavor in the second and third game, or sometimes the third game's a yawner. People are just tired and they've gone out. Game doesn't mean anything late in the year. Friday, Saturday, look out Sunday. But anyway, um, but, but if you're local and, and the deal coming into the league is that you got to pay for the other team's travel and by travel it's not a bus. It's fucking 25 flights in and out. Right and hotel and all that. It's just I can understand. I'm surprised that we've had since 1991, when I was 14 years old, and we got the St. John's Maple Leafs, and I still couldn't fucking can't believe we got them. Like people locally were like, "What? We're going from what senior hockey? We have the Toronto fucking Maple Leafs farm team. All of a sudden, you go down, Felix Potvin's playing. You were like, "What? Yannick Perot? Right? These guys are just playing in the Memorial Stadium in St. John's. It was fucking." Unbelievable, um, and continues to be right. But more often than not, we had the Leafs right up until St. John's Leafs right up, and they're now the Marlies. Remember, until I think 2005. Then we had the Fog Devils. Then we had the St. John's Ice Caps, uh, Winnipeg's farm team, AHL Winnipeg's farm team, and then Montreal's farm team. And now we got the Growlers. And in my experience, it's never been that we get no fans. I mean, sometimes some years you're like, ah, we could add a few more, but. We never are like bottom of the league in, in fans. Um, and as far as I see, the Growlers are like the most supported of all the teams. But what can you do, man? Um, what do you do when you live in a shoe? As Jeff Circa would say, steal some loot and move to a boot. Anyway, that's that. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet 5 bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets, only on DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. My pod uh, tomorrow is going to be senior. I'm going to have senior back on. I got to fly to Halifax at 1 o'clock uh, p.m. at 1 p.m. So I, I really... And this one, I got to bring all my gear because I'm skating in New York. So a little bit of a headache, and I'm going to have to get to the airport a couple hours early. If not for my hockey gear, I never take luggage anymore. It's too much of a headache. It gets lost. And fucking waiting an extra like two hours sometimes. 
I don't know what Witter's talking about in Toronto. I know last year this Chicklets, Ryan Whitney had like an awful experience. I, I've had lots, so I just kind of numb to it. I didn't really listen to his whole rant. So I'm not sure exactly what he was upset about, but I'll tell you this. Every fucking time, I think it was connections, but every goddamn time in Toronto, no matter, and as opposed to every other airport, the fucking luggage takes forever. How often have I gone, what the fuck did I do bringing a bag? Waiting, you get in at like 105 and it's like 338 and you're like, what in God's name is going on? And you might have sticks and the guy's like, well, no, they'll come in. They're sticks. They'll be late. Why? Why? Sticks around the fucking plane, aren't they? So what's the difference? What do you mean they'll be late? You have a fucking your own charter with, with sticks, so many sticks and golf clubs that you can't keep fucking tracking them. You know what I mean? I put sticks and my hockey bag on the goddamn flight. And my hockey bag's here. Two hours later, the sticks show up. How many times has that happened in Toronto? You might think I'm fucking around. Anybody that goes through there, you know exactly what I mean. It's always sticks. Always. I don't travel with golf clubs, but I often see people that do. And they're saying the same thing. Why the clubs? Why the stick? I mean, I don't know. And half the times the sticks don't even fucking show up. Um, yeah, at least half the time. Um, which is why often now, when I get, honestly, when I travel with my sticks, I'll often tape up the bottom and put broken on it. Just you know, on white tape with broken on it, just, just a signifier. Maybe people won't steal it. And then I block out where my name is, um, whether it's Ryan or Hitchcock or whatever, just, just not that everybody knows, but it's just like some people do and they might, ah, I put two and two together. That's a brand new true hockey stick with Ryan written on it. I'm sure he, maybe I'll keep that one. I mean, I, I, that's not an Air Canada thing. That's not a Toronto thing. It happens everywhere. I just mean it seems that, I guess with all the traffic coming through Toronto, that, but anyway, what a goddamn headache. But it's like the weather, right? The weather sucks. Who do you complain to? Like when I go up there and try, I, I know it's an Air Canada. When it's Air Canada, I often go off, but like, what can you do? It's only like these workers, it's not their fault, right? You see people flipping out. Ever see the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles where Steve Martin goes fucking crazy on the lady behind the desk? It's great. And side note, if you haven't seen it, watch it. And what I love about that movie and what I love about that scene is that nobody says anything offsides the whole movie until that one point. He says, yeah, give me my fucking car because I had to fucking walk here from the fucking runway because you don't fucking have my fucking car. He loses it. And it must have been a decision for those people that were producing that movie. Because that one scene must have taken it to R-rated, right? There's nothing else in the movie. There's no nudity. There's no violence. It's pretty much general admission or PG-13 at best until he loses his goddamn mind. And for comic effect, it's only that one scene. And they, I don't know how many extra ratings that, in other words, back then when it's not really streaming and you're, you're, you're relying on a box office, if you're going to make your movie rated R, that cuts off half the audience, especially ones that are going to see planes, trains, and automobiles. It's not like they were going to see Fifty Shades of Grey or 300 or something, which is so fucking heavily soaked in violence or sex that, you know, one scene removed isn't going to do anything. But planes, trains, and automobiles is like Uncle Buck or fucking The Great Outdoors or something, right? Which is a family movie for everybody, except they put it all on the line and they change their rating just for that one goddamn scene. And I think it's hilarious. But in any case, I, I think the same and I'm often at the airport wanting to freak out, but it's not that worker's fault. It's no one behind the fucking desk. It's not their fault. It's not the guy that, or the guy that, or girl that has to deal with the luggage, right? Customer service at Air Canada at the, at the Toronto airport, man, that's a tough one. Because it's not your fault, but every single person that comes to see you is losing their fucking mind and threatening you in some cases. Fuck you. I'll take my business elsewhere. I'd go, yeah, sure. I don't know. I got a job at Air Canada because I live down the street and I need work. Right? I don't know what happened to you on your flight from Finland. I have no fucking idea, but I know it ain't my fault. 
So all we can do is take your goddamn name, give me your bag tag, and I'll do the best I can. Right? And it would save a lot of trouble. I understand people are frustrated, but you're just you're getting mad at the wrong people. Right. The people that you're really upset at are somewhere in an office in an ivory tower, way further away than you could ever fucking dream of. And unless you bump into them, unless you happen to get hooked up with like fucking platinum seats at a Leafs game or something, or you run into them as they're getting in their fucking executive seats on a plane, you're probably never going to run into them. So your complaints are falling on deaf ears. Right? No one to get mad at. You call in, complain about your phone bill. How many times have I done that? Oh, yeah, this is recorded, is it? You know, they always say that. This is recorded for our records, yeah? Well, I'm going to start with this one. How about this? Fuck yourself. And now we'll go from there. What are you talking about, sir? Yeah, I'm talking about I just paid triple my fucking phone bill because you guys fucked up my roaming or what. But again, and I've done it. It ain't his fault. Right? Some dude. Or a girl. That's like, and people get mad. Like, you know, you can tell they're like from a foreign place. Usually it seems to me maybe India or there's a lot of uh, just with the accents, right? Like, because I find there's a lot of communication breakdown. They might know English, but just a bit. And it's no different than I work. If I work customer service for some company in Bangladesh, right? And you taught me a little bit of um, Pakistani. Is that a language? Um. Jesus, I got to press pause. That is over the top. I really should know what they speak. Wow. I just looked up East Indian language, also known as Mobai Marathi. And East Indian Marathi is a form of Marathi Konkani languages spoken in Bombay, which is Mumbai. Wow. It has a significant amount of Indo-Portuguese loanwords. I had no fucking idea. That's one of the most populated places on earth, and I've never heard anybody say that word. Marathi Konkani. Wow. Okay, so let's say someone gave me a year or two crash course in Marathi Konkani. Um, right? I still probably wouldn't be the best to deal with customer service with the local cable company or whatever it is. But again... Let's say it's Bell um, Alliant or something. Let's say I'm dealing with Bell or Bell Mobility. I got a problem with my cell phone. I phone in and, you know, it's a call service set up overseas somewhere. Let's just say Mumbai there. Well, I might be upset, but again, it's not this person's fault on the other end. They're, they're, they're working. They applied for a job and they got it. Now, what Bell is doing in a foreign country dealing with Local Canadian problems, I don't really know. But that's more along the line of if you're going to complain, you complain to the source, not some person that's trying to make a living. Right? Some guy or girls over there, I don't know, just out of high school like we are or whatever and got some kind of bridge job, wants something better. But, like, you know, there's call centers over here too. But you got to realize it's not their fault. It might be a complaint, and sometimes I lose it. I say it, I'm like, I'm not trying to be racist here, but you don't understand what I'm saying. And you're a customer service, right? There's no nuance to it. You're hearing what I'm saying, very solid, very black and white, right? What I'm trying to say to you, sir, is that whatever the situation might be, it might be nuanced. It might be like I talked to someone last week. I was misunderstood. They told me this plan. I went to Florida, not Indiana, and I thought it was a U.S. plan, not... And if you don't know states or, or provinces, the geography, you don't even know what I'm talking about in the first place. But it's not your fault. You answered a job wherever the hell you are. Fucking, I don't know. Cologne, Germany, London, England. Fucking Tokyo. I don't know. Wherever. Papua New Guinea. If you If you apply for a job and they give it to you, and I'm talking to you on the phone. It's you know, it's not your fault, but I often have acted like it is. Anyway, same thing with referees. For years, I'd lose my fucking mind, and then at one point, I just said, you know what? I'm going to shake their hands after every game. People are like, oh, the reps are fucking us. Usually, the reps aren't trying to fuck you. There's no reason for it. I could see if the rep would get a million dollars if the other team won. 
or there was some like obvious personal vendetta. Oh yeah, well the captain of this team fucked your wife, ref. Obviously, you're probably going to call one on us with a minute left in the third. But that's not usually the case, right? It's not usually the case. Usually, it's just some fucking person trying to make, you know, especially you're talking about minor hockey and senior hockey and shit. Come on. They're just out there. I mean, there might be a level of show off to it, showboating. But I, the vast majority of the time, you know, you're some fucking tenured, especially when they're minor hockey. See, parents going nuts. We hear about the parents going nuts, like against the coaches and the players. It often happens with the ref. And you're like, man, we're in like fucking, I don't know, Smith's Falls, Ontario or Springdale, Newfoundland. And these guys come down and get paid next to nothing to ref these minor games. Do you really think that they're trying to fuck over a number 10 on blue? Really? Why? Anyway, it's my two cents. And that's a half hour. Once again, I answered one question, got 10 lined up here, and I didn't even really answer that. I guess I did. Anyway, appreciate you tuning in. I leave for Halifax tomorrow afternoon. I thought it was tomorrow night, so I'm going to get senior up here and mail in an episode. I, don't worry, I got some good questions. If you have any, if this is published tonight and you have you hear this and you have any you want me to ask them, shoot me a note. Don't make it on Twitter, though. Um, Facebook and Instagram are an absolute fucking mess for me. And uh, I, I, more and more, I'm just, I'm reluctant to even open it up. But uh, shoot me a note on Twitter, and we'll get the conversation publicly going. That helps the podcast anyway. And uh, like I said, if you're in Halifax or Binghamton, or by extension, the weekend after that, I'm in Winnipeg. The weekend after that, I'm in uh, Yorkton, Saskatchewan. The weekend after that, I'm in Sarnia. The weekend after that's the ECMAs. I'll be in PEI. The weekend after that, I'll be back in Halifax. And that's the next month or so. Anyway, thanks for listening. If you're downtown St. John's, you want to have a beer, why not go to the Bull and Barrel, Trinity Pub, Rob Roy Confusion, Martini Bar, TJ's Pub, or Greensleeves. Of course, if you're going to have a bite to eat, start at the Loose Tie right above Greensleeves. New and improved loose tie. And of course, try out Merchant Tavern and Blue on Water, two unreal restaurants that are part of the fabric of downtown St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. Of course, if you're in the East End or close to Wedgwood Cafe, and they also do catering. Good guy, Peter Wedgwood. If you want to work out, strength and balance for the body and mind, Rope Walk Lane, power conditioning, Ryan Power. Check it out. He's an expert at what he does. And uh, I'm living proof. Uh, Pitbull Pain Relief, the pain sticks that just don't quit. Go to pitbullpainrelief.com, see what all that fuss is about. True hockey, take what's yours. And of course, I nearly forgot. If you're looking to lube up, you want to lube up? Two locations of Mr. Lube right here in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. One's on Camel Road, one's on Torbay Road. Live a laugh, a lube. Be back in just a couple of days. Terry Ryan Sr. Hope to see you guys this weekend. If not, stay tuned. And we shall meet up at some point as I'm traveling to every corner of North America in the next six or seven months. Anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, catch you guys on the rebound.